Ciao Gian Andrea Noseda, benvenuto a Tel Aviv. Grazie, grazie Guy. Facciamo un po' in italiano o forse è meglio in italiano? Come, come vuoi, tu, no, parli think, tu parli benissimo italiano. I think it's better to move to English. <laughs> ok, let's move to English. Um, so I welcome you to our live broadcast. Thank you for having You're welcome, it's a pleasure. this time with us. <clears throat> I'm sorry for my voice, I'm a bit cold. Um, I'd like to start um, with the fact that you are our principal guest conductor and you've been coming here for 10 years annually. So every year you are with us at least once, sometimes even more. So I assume that you probably know Tel Aviv by now pretty well. And I'm wondering if you have any favorite places to go, favorite restaurants. Uh, how's the city treating you? The, the city and the orchestra and everybody is treating me very well. I feel myself, uh, along with my wife Lucia, that she's always with me, very welcomed in Tel Aviv. But as you know, being an artist uh, of the Israel Philharmonic, when you come here, you have uh, in two weeks uh, 10 concerts right. uh, without counting rehearsals. So when you don't have concert, most of the time you lie in bed. After that, you do just uh, a walk uh, alongside the sea. Mm -hmm. But of course, after the concert, uh, I've been, uh, we have been taken uh, to some incredible restaurants, incredible restaurants. I will not name one, otherwise okay. I will be unfair with the Fair others. Uh, and also, you know, the fact uh, that the, the hotel is just uh, on the, on the seaside is fantastic because uh, it's a fantastic combination between work and holiday. Of course, I'm not holiday, I'm not for pleasure, but it's fantastic. And being Italian, the, the weather yeah. and the yeah. colors uh, is very similar to the south of my, of my country, yeah. as you know very I well. Know, <laughs> I, know, oh, I know. So speaking of the orchestra, um, I'm just wondering, um, since you could observe very well in the last 10 years, let's say, the orchestra and the development, uh, I can imagine that every year that you come, you see new faces because the generation change now is incredible in the orchestra. I think in the last seven years, we have around 30 new members, some in key positions. And I'm wondering, how do you feel? How do you see the development, the changing? This is the normal uh, life uh, of an orchestra. There is a constant change because it's like a society. Mm -hmm. One gets uh, senior, older, retires, uh, uh, one position or more positions are open. But you know what is uh, fascinating about this orchestra? When I came here first time, it was a sort of uh, mature orchestra yeah. with a very specific uh, sound quality produced, uh, very particular, mm -hmm. you know? <coughs> and nowadays, everybody says, oh, all the orchestras, they look like each other because there is no more difference, America, Russia, Italy, village. because a global, yeah. global village, because everybody travels, uh, uh, you don't have the specific sound. Well, when I came here, the first uh, years was incredible, the impact, uh, the sound produced by the orchestra had to me. But the most uh, incredible thing is, <coughs> even if, uh, 30 people, even more, where new people are in the orchestra, the orchestra has in uh, its genes uh, this kind of dark sound. Of course, there is the, the freshness of yeah. the young blood, of course, the young yeah. uh, energy, uh, but uh, it's fantastic not to lose that right. lesson with more energy, yeah. with more involvement, <coughs> but still to keep that, that makes this orchestra unique. Yeah. That's why uh, it's, it's fantastic. It's like to go back uh, to a cert, uh, certain old way to make music. Yeah. I'm not saying the orchestra soul <laughs> is sounding in old way, but this kind of old way in a good sense, yeah. you know? When, uh, well, I think, you know, we all, my generation, we all grew up literally in those corridors here we used to come to concerts and, to in listen to music. and listen and we got this probably this sound um, uh, I'd love to speak now a little bit about our main piece of the program <laughs> the Rossini the Stubborn Matter it's incredible incredible piece I find uh, very powerful very touching and dramatic and and it's incredible the circumstances of this piece that was written so Rossini actually stopped composing, composing for 10 years you know, didn't compose anything he, he stopped composing uh, operas at a certain point after uh, William Tell. He decided, uh, okay, whatever I had to say, I did. Yeah. So now I will do something else. He was a very good chef. He invented yeah. uh, new recipes. Uh, he enjoyed life very much. 
but uh, you know, uh, he, s he didn't stop composing. He, s he kept composing small pieces for piano uh -huh. uh, that he called uh, uh, the pieces of, of my old age scenes. This is the uh -huh. scenes of my, my old, old age. age. And uh, he didn't think uh, those pieces to be played. They just composed for, for pleasure, for probably for himself. For himself. But uh, uh, when he was asked uh, in, uh, in Spain, I think, yeah, to, to compose uh, a Stabat Mater, of course he was very aware about the Stabat Mater by Pergolesi, mm -hmm. which is a masterpiece. He accepted the idea. So four years after he decided not to compose any, any opera, anymore, he started to compose the Stabat Mater, but he composed only the first six pieces. Yeah. Because uh, one commissioner just wanted to have uh, a Rossini manuscript in his uh, collection. Mm -hmm. You know, just to be in the collection. Okay, Rossini wrote six pieces and uh, asked <laughs> someone else, uh, a right. colleague, okay, finish the, the work and we will give uh, yeah. to this guy and get the money. But of course, uh, when uh, came to the point uh, to a performance, a, a one editor wanted to publish it. So that is not uh, any more question for a collector, yes. just to be, you know, in one uh, mm -hmm. place locked in. <coughs> I said, no, I cannot accept, uh, it's not 100% my hand. Mm -hmm. So 10 years later, he composed the last four pieces. Yeah. So number seven, eight, nine, ten. Mm -hmm. And after that, the publisher published that. Uh, in, uh, and the style is amazing. It's almost a new style, almost ver it's very Gianni. He's so very looking for, yeah. looking much ahead yeah. uh, for his time. If you consider there are seven, eight years between the first six pieces and the last yeah. four, there is anyway a sort of continuation of, mm -hmm. uh, but after Guglielmo Tell, even Guglielmo Tell, uh, William Tell, uh, show showed a, a different kind of way of composing. Yeah. So he developed uh, this kind Incredible. of uh, yeah. new, new era. And the other piece, the Petit Messe Solemnel, much later, <coughs> was uh, al also a sacred piece. Uh, incredible. So he, he stopped composing opera. But it's wrong to say he stopped composing, composing music. Right. And it's interesting to say, because I remember in the first rehearsal, you said, I don't consider this uh, a sacred piece or a, a religious piece. How yeah, come? I, I think uh, uh, he's more talking to the soul, to the spirituality of everybody. Mm -hmm. It's not important to be Christian or to be a believer right. to get this music. Yeah. It's like the Requiem by Verdi. Mm -hmm. It's coming to the heart yeah. of everybody yeah. because it's so honest. The integrity of it, this music yeah. is so spiritually uh, strong yeah. and in a way also tender so it arrives yeah. uh, arrives yeah. to everybody <coughs> so i always consider it as a human a human approach by rossini to get close to the idea of god yeah. and i'm interested as a musician of course and working with you one of the great italian interpreters today and you you spoke an, a, lot, a little thing uh, in the rehearsal again about the different styles between rossini and Verdi, and I think it can be really interesting if you can speak a little bit about it again. So we have the same fire, but it burns differently or in yeah. a... Yeah, in, uh, <laughs> it is true. With Verdi, when <coughs> Verdi put the fire on, you risk to burn yourself. Right. Uh, with Rossini, you should always uh, look the fire in the fireplace. Mm -hmm. it, you get too close, you burn. burn. In the but uh, there is a sort of distance, not because uh, Rossini <coughs> is less involved than Verdi, right. but because he composed it, you yeah. know, 30 years earlier. Yeah. So the, the type of, uh, no, to be restrained, uh, to be sort of, uh, not uh, detached, but uh, behaving uh, yeah. well, polite. polite. But, uh, but there is fire, there is fire oh, in yeah. it. Absolutely. Master, I would love to give you uh, our IPO questionnaire or <laughs> quiz. Oh, yeah. That it's, is dangerous. No, no, it's, it's all easy. Um, it's 10 questions. Quick questions, quick answers. Okay. And maybe we speak a little bit about it. So, what's the first thing you do when you get home after traveling? Of course, you're traveling a lot. I go out in the balcony and I look <coughs> uh, my garden, if there are flowers, if they blossom, this is in the spring, of course, 
or in the in the fall uh, if the leaves are still there or but the first thing I go out I, I look the view of the lake and the garden the conditions Lago of the Maggiore? garden Lago Maggiore eh, Lake Maggiore bello. and what's your favorite food I'm interested especially I know you're a great cook I adore uh, of course as an Italian pasta but probably my the food I like <coughs> mostly is risotto Risotto. risotto. When it is uh, well cooked, uh, yeah. it is incredible. Your favorite concert hall? My favorite concert hall is uh, Santori Hall in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. There are several, eh? but sure, if you sure. ask uh, just yeah. one, uh, yeah. one yeah. shot, yeah, is yeah. Santori Hall. And your favorite airport to travel? I like very much Copenhagen Airport. Yeah because a lot of wood uh, and you don't uh, feel to be in the airport yeah. even when you have uh, to <coughs> connect with different flight yeah what relaxes you relax me to read uh, books uh, to watch sport uh, television to walk mm -hmm. just walk uh, in any place in the cities best in the nature in the forest yeah. uh, that's uh, really relaxes me and uh, makes me feel part of the bigger world. Yeah, nice. What would you be if you weren't a musician? Is it possible? <sighs> it's difficult because uh, I started to learn the notes uh, and to try to play the piano before I was going in the first, uh, in the first class of the school. So for me, the language is very natural. Yeah. But uh, okay. I don't know, probably when I was a teenager, I was a uh, sort of promising uh, football player. At a certain point I had to make a decision when I was uh, 16, 17, uh, what to do. Yeah, I decided for music. Good, good decision. Um, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, what musical piece most inspired you to become a musician? I remember mine was Firebird, for example, that hmm. we played last year. We played together. Yeah. It was a very good performance. Uh, I think... Uh, there are a uh, few pieces. Probably one of the most powerful, when I listened for the first time, I was really shocked, was the Mozart G minor symphony and two or three years later, Don Giovanni, mm -hmm. recording. Oh, yeah. And a few years later, the Matteo's Passion by Bach <coughs> and the Sac Sac uh, Sacre de Printemps. Yeah. Uh, great. What are you reading these days? You spoke about books. In these days, uh, unfortunately, I'm uh, reading a lot of uh, newspapers uh, because uh, there are uh, many things in Italy happening. Yeah. Also, the situation, political situation, they don't, uh, uh, mm. they, they don't come together yeah. to make a government. So I try to be informed because I don't like to be seen as an artist disconnected right. with the world. So, yeah. uh, for now. The book is there. I have on my is a is a sort of uh, book uh, connected to the history of uh, Italy in the 90s, a uh, beginning of uh, 2000, mm -hmm. so 21st century. Connection State <coughs> Mafia. That mm. is a book. It's not very, let's say, yeah. enjoyable, but it is uh, nice to know it. Yeah. Uh, who influenced you the most? In uh, music or in general? Uh, I met very good people. Yeah. I've been lucky <coughs> because I think uh, personality of ev every one of us is a sort of uh, combination of uh, many gifts yeah. you get from people and you put and you take in your pocket. Yeah. A little by little, your personality. So in music, I had very good teachers, uh, very good uh, figures in front of me. In the school, uh, as a friend, also some very good friends and uh, I have to say I'm very grateful to to dad mom and my brother my yeah. brother is younger but uh, in a way I respect him because uh, as a sensibility he's not a musician uh, he has a special sensibility so Beautiful. also to grow together <coughs> has been uh, has been very very beautiful great last question we, uh, what's a piece of advice you received that you cherish and you can share. We don't have a lot of time, so... Uh, do better you can what you have to do. Fantastic. Maestro, grazie mille. Grazie a te, è stato un piacere, Guy. E grazie al concerto. Okay.